house. Much better, much better. What? You want a what, sir? You're German, sir? Why do Germans love to dress up and kick the, kick the men in the crotch and have butt sex with scat? Okay, he's ready to go. Okay, we're ready to go. Here you go. Introduce yourself you go. Okay, can you hear me? Who is this strange man wearing a business suit in Las Vegas? It's me. But I'm a research guy, so I'm supposed to look the part. Anyway, my name is Larry Poneman, and uh, the name of my company is called Poneman Institute. And we did a very interesting study on your favorite topic called e-voting. And uh, I want to, I know, I know, boo, boo, boo. <laughs> now, some of you look, uh, you know, look very cool and dapper, and I'm sorry I'm wearing this awful business suit, but this is my handle. I'm really, and uh, my, my, my background, by the way, if you want to know something about me, I'm not a Fed. Um, never was. No, that's not true. But I. <laughs> what a liar! But I actually started off as a try to be a musician and a hip. I was a hippie in those days. We had hippies. It's you know your parents, for example. I was a sellout. I. But I still have a Fender. <laughs> hey, who said that? Okay, now that we got that introduction over. What I'd like to do is, on a serious note, tell you that e-voting is a serious issue. And uh, quite frankly, we decided to do a study on this issue because we think that the general public, not you wonderful people, but the general public, is unbelievably complacent about this whole thing. People just don't worry about it. Are you worried about it? OK. Do you think that the election is going to be fair? Yeah. OK. You know it. Go for it. Okay, so now let me just tell you what we did. We talked to about, oh, several thousand people in the United States, and we asked them a, quest a couple of questions. In fact, some of you participated in this, the same survey about that. Bottom line is, what do you think? Do you trust e-voting? Well, you say hell no, but let me just tell you what we found very quickly, because I know we're going to run out of time. I don't get a headache by looking at all those PowerPoints. Okay. Now, what we did is we asked you. You are the group called Expert. Can you believe it? Hello, Experts. Yeah, Expert. You know who you are. Stop being so serious, please. And what we ended up doing is we wanted to find out your overall opinion. And you know what? You think that e-voting sucks. But I will also say that the general population are fa favorably... <laughs> Who are these people? Where are they? Where are they drinking, these people? God damn! Here's another weird slide. Okay, so what exp what's your feeling about how much comfort or confidence you have? And guess what? You folks are not confident. Little confidence and significantly no confidence in e-voting. And the general population, you know, again, most of these folks who responded have a high degree of confidence. They're not worried. Okay, so based on what you know today, someone's cell phone is ringing, kill that person. I hear that sound, I go crazy. Slowly I turn. So how would you compare e-voting to traditional paper ballot machines? And again, you guys are saying e-voting is less likely to record and report my vote accurately. That's a serious state of affairs. Based on what you know today, how would you compare e-voting to traditional paper ballots? And in terms of tampering with election results, e-voting is much less secure. E-voting is less secure. There was no one that we spoke to, who we will admit to anyway, that believed that e-voting is more secure. So here's the bottom line issue. What worries you? What worries people today? You, for you, 
the number one or number two issue is attempt to influence the outcome of the election. And you know that's serious stuff. I can't hear you. Say it again, please. Go Florida. Shoot that masked man. But at the end of the day, that's really the issue. And that's, look, it's serious. That's why I'm wearing a business suit. I'm talking to you as your father would talk to you. <laughs> and yes, I have my son, David, who is a, he idolizes what you do. He's a very, very good kid. But you know what? Bottom line is, this is what I'd like to say. If there's David right there, as a matter of No, he is lucky. <laughs> Can you imagine if that was the case and my son was here? I'd like lose my, my part of my body. <laughs> so anyway, here's the bottom line. It is a serious state of affairs. And really, if you kind of look at it, if we assume that you know more about information security than just about any person in the universe, let's just assume that. Maybe I'm wrong. Then guess, if that's in fact true, then there's a need to seriously consider the impact of a wide-scale abuse and manipulation. There's a need for some accountability, and there's also a need to think about some solutions. Nico Sells, who you know and love, Nico and I were talking about it. In fact, she came up with a great solution. Maybe we get rid of e-voting technology, we burn it, blow it up or whatever, and maybe we go back to kind of the absentee system in order to have some accountability, because we're talking about election in 92 days. And in 92 days, we just don't have our act together. It's a pretty serious state of affairs. Now listen, we're very lonely people in Tucson, Arizona. That's where this thing is. And if you are interested in any of the work that we do, and we study very cool things. We study privacy, data protection, information security policy. So we do a lot of interesting studies. But if you're interested, you want to get involved, I'm serious, give me a call. So, and, and please don't hack my system. Please don't. Thank you very much. Slides, good. Okay, so we're going to still need the projectors. I think the Wi-Fi guys are going to demonstrate something with it, so we'll keep the projectors up. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to get started with the award ceremony. Before we do that, I have a couple of general announcements I'm going to end up making. Um, first of all, we love you. You guys are cool. Thanks for coming. So give yourself a round of applause. And... Uh, Next to you, we love our staff, all the guys in the red shirts who made the show possible. Yeah. And girls, that's right. The show wouldn't operate without the wonderful girls, and especially the two in dispatch, who make basically they're the glue that holds all of us together. So even though they're still in dispatch, we're going to give them applause. Okay. New this year, you might have noticed some people running around in blue shirts. Uh, we did that to kind of avoid confusion with you guys. The blue shirts are the people that managed all of you speakers and made sure you got to where you were supposed to be on time. And that's uh, Agent X is a category. So uh, give him a round of applause. Cool. I also want to uh, single out for some special attention um, the person who really makes things operate here on the ground. Uh, I might pay the bills and, and host the website and do a lot of stuff, but I get pretty busy, and so I count on my right-hand man to make sure that the show actually runs. So you can think of this person as sort of uh, the operations uh, COO, and that person is Zach here. So, yeah, without Zach, uh, nothing would happen here. So I just want to make sure you uh, you realize who he is. He's not my evil clone like, you know, the evil Kirk in Star Trek. He's actually is his own, own person. Okay, with that said, um, I would like to go ahead and start things off. We're going to kind of go with the newest contest first, and we're going to work our way all the way up to uh, the Capture the Flag winners. So we're going to go in reverse order. Um, starting off, I want to hand the phone first to uh, Russ, who wants to, who's in charge of the contests this year. So he wants to just say a little bit about the overall contests and then, uh, and then we'll start it up. And the first up will be uh, the TCPIP appliance winners. So with that said, I want to hand it off to Russ. What's up, guys? All right, how many of you were in the contest this year? 
Okay, how many of you watched the contest? How many of you were awake up until an hour ago? All right, what we did with this year was we tried to take DEF CON back to what it used to be, more technical. And what we did was we introduced a bunch of new contests. And what we found out was a whole bunch of very afraid people out there to get involved. All right, we had a Robot Wars contest for the first year. Okay, how many of you watched that? All right. Now, was that cool or what? Okay. Now, let's have more than one next year. Come on, you guys are supposed to be smart, you know? Okay, who saw the IP appliance contest? All right, was that okay? Yeah. Okay, you know my email address, right, if you have feedback. All right, so basically what I want to say is, for next year, if we're going to keep adding this stuff, we need more involvement. If there's something you guys are interested in, jump in there, get involved. The robots were really cool this year. We need uh, people with good ideas for other contests and to help us out with this, all right? So we're going to go down the list here, and I'm going to hand the, the uh, mic back to Jeff here. So um, is Neural in here? Louie, are you here? That would be a no. Okay, Greg. You're the doppelganger. All right, for the TCP IP appliance contest, these folks had to develop some kind of appliance, any kind of appliance that would communicate over the network. Um, there were two entrants for this contest. Uh, one entrant was a skull, and they communicated with the different functions of the skull. And the other one was an IRC um, connection that they tried to communicate over the network. However, the network was not functioning properly when they attempted to do that. Uh, but they put in a great deal of time and effort in getting to the point that they got to, and it was pretty cool, and we encourage more participation next year. Um, there is a uh, prize for second place. That was the IRC team. If you are here, please come forward. IRC team. Yeah, there they are. Okay, their prize. <laughs> Your prize is a mini web server. See what you can do with it. Good job, guys. All right. If um, the first place team, which I believe was just one person, uh, the skull team. Do you have the skull? Does he have the skull with him? Do you have your skull with you? All right, for them, we have actually um, a, a cash prize from the University of Advancing Technologies. Um, we also have a t-shirt for them, um, as well as the coveted black winner's uh, contest winner badge. Let's them in the future shows. Let's them in the future shows. Cash prize from uh, UAT was $50 for this one. I know most of you here are a lot smarter than I am, so why didn't some of you enter and kick my butt in this contest? I have no idea. It's easy to do. Most of you know how to do, you know, some hardware. Hardware is not that scary. Seriously, more people should enter next year. It's a pretty cool contest. Next up, we've got the uh, Robot Wars. This is also a first time competition that we've never done before. Uh, some of you might have seen all those DEF CON ping pong balls floating around. Uh, minimum order was 1,000, so we made 1,000 of these things. And uh, it was for the robots to move from one side to the other. Uh, we quickly realized there's three types of ping pong balls out in the world, so these were competition grade ping pong balls that should not fit ping pong ball guns, unfortunately. So, with that said, I want to hand off the uh, microphone to Blue Boar, whose uh, brainchild this was. He's going to tell you a little bit about the contest and give away the prizes. Thank you. Um, I think a bunch of people uh, came by and saw the competition we had yesterday. Uh, close contest, but uh, Team Irvine were the winners. Thank you. 
Are the, uh, are the Irvine guys here? Yeah. Come on up. Have them bring your robot. You have the bot with you? You guys have the bot, bot with you by chance? Okay. Uh, their entry was the, uh, the Irvine Bong Bot. <laughs> and uh, very much appreciate these guys participating. They met the challenge as described and uh, put on a good show for us yesterday. So they're our first place winners. All right. And for prizes for these guys, um, again, compliments of the University of Advancing Technology. We have a t-shirt. This one's actually co pretty cool. It says, Chicks Dig Guys That Write Recursive Algorithms. <laughs> Go ahead. We also have, for them, as a prize, there are uh, 256 meg USB keys in here for each of you, as well as... $50 total, you have to, guys, just go out and drink for a while. And uh, uh, again, compliments to the University, University of Advancing Technology. So congratulations. That could have been yours. <laughs> okay. Now we're into some of the more established contests. We've got the lock picking winners. Lock picking's come a long way in the last couple of years. They've got some cool timers, new locks. They've got a really cool system set up there. Um, personally responsible with that is going to be Greg. He's going to talk about it a little bit. There's a couple categories. Uh, we're going to hear from the winners, kind of their winning technique. And uh, we actually have some of the lock pick contest recorded this year, so we're going to digitize it. We're going to put it online so maybe you can see a little bit of the action. So with that said, here's Greg. All right, first off, um, I'd like to also recognize Kai Goth, who was heavily involved in getting this organized this year. Stand up. Stand up. Where are you at, Ted? Ted? <laughs> yeah. As well as DC719, which helped do some of the organization, as well as some of the lockpick boards. So DC719, stand up. Yeah. All right, this year we had two categories that uh, we did the contest for. One was the old one, which was the speed contest, and the other one was an obstacle course. Um, the obstacle course is brand new. It was an eight-sided board, and what you had to do was attempt eight different locks on there, and whoever won got the most locks open, and two would be the aggregate time would be the winner. Um, we had a about 10 to 12 people try that particular set. It was very challenging. Those were really hard locks that were intentionally put on there. And so uh, we did have uh, some winners with that as well. So I'll start with third place for the obstacle course. Um, third place was Narflan. Okay, for third place, we have a t-shirt. How many locks, yeah? Okay, yeah, um, for that particular one, Narflan got three of the eight possible locks. They were very challenging. Cool, thanks. Second place, also with three locks, um, just a little faster time was Grant. Grant, if you're here. Okay. The shirts were compliments again of UAT, and we really appreciate our uh, sponsors of the prizes. All right. First place. For the obstacle course is actually the returning champion of last year from the speed course, Q Mark. Yeah. Q Mark got seven of the eight locks. <laughs> and he was within probably minutes of finishing the eighth lock before he got kicked out of the room. Uh, last night. So um, did a really great job, tremendous effort on that. 
what we have here, uh, we have $50 from the University of Advancing Technology and a USB key. We have $50 from Security Horizon to Fry's. There's those two. We also have um, more t-shirts than you can shake a stick at, so hang on. And the lock picking winner shirt. All right, now for the speed contest. There were 25 people that started this contest. We had three of eight actually finish the semifinals. Um, we had some very competitive locks on this, and uh, the folks that uh, got to the finals did a tremendous job to get there. In order to make it to the finals of the, uh, the speed contest, they had to, one, be able to break into your home. Okay, break into a, a hand knob lock. The second round was actually a deadbolt lock. The third round was a door, literally a door that they had to do the handle lock, the deadbolt lock, and they had to do a padlock as well. And the finals was that same combination. Um, the De or the uh, padlock was actually a tremendously hard padlock. Uh, some of them got it, some of them didn't, but they all did a great job. <clears throat> so to recognize the top three, uh, we have a few prizes there as well. Um, third place on the speed contest, Narflan. Yeah. Again, great job. <laughs> oh, it's a good point. Sorry, the the there's actually not a third place. It was a tie for second uh, on the speed contest. That was my bad. <laughs> so, great job. So the other second place finisher is Ian. Is Ian here? Yeah. Great job. Thank what you. was the time? What was the time? Um, no time. There, there was no time because we made it so hard for them they couldn't finish. That's why they tied, that's why they tied for a second. Um, however, I do want to mention that the folks that made it into the finals, there were eight people out of 24 that, had to make, or that made it into the finals. In order to make it into even the semifinals, they had to be able to open a lock in 13.5 seconds or less. So, does anybody feel like their house is safe now? <laughs> Not me. Okay, first place for the speed contest. Actually, a newcomer this year. His name is Lemon Jello. Lemon Jello. And just off the cuff, Limoncello is going to talk for just a moment about his technique and how good it felt to be the winner. <laughs> no pressure. Oh man, I have to talk. Uh, yeah, just uh, I, I started last year because of I saw the competition at DEF CON and uh, just a lot of practice, uh, a lot of stealing locks from my friends. Um, <laughs> A lot of I I have to thank my friends for all their support. Uh, Froggy, Tiger, Colonel Panic, Zeropa, uh, Tom, uh, hey, my mom. Ian right there, his mom, uh, <laughs> and RC, <laughs> and Brandon for letting me crash in his room this year. Thank you. Okay. Lemon Jello actually did have a time on the finals. It was 477 seconds, I believe. As, um, and with a very difficult lock on that board, that was a tremendous time. Okay, for Lemon Jello, we have $50 in cash, a uh, USB key, and some T-shirts. Um, again, compliments of the University of Advancing Technology. We'd also like to thank Jinx for a couple of the shirts that we have as well. Uh, you also get a Fry's $50 gift certificate uh, from Security Horizon. And congratulations, and here is your Lock Picking Champion t-shirt. Right on. I like that contest. It makes me feel secure at night. <laughs> um, 
for those of you who don't know, the coveted black badge only goes to uh, usually the, the leader, the winners of any of the contests, and it allows you uh, free entry to DEF CON for life. So, yeah. It's worth competing in these things. Get up, step up and compete. Okay, next up is the Wi-Fi contest. It was a tremendous success last year. And uh, it's back again this year with a couple of tweaks for the rules. And uh, Dave Moore is the person who's put it together again for the second year. He's going to get up here, tell you about some of the stuff that happened, and uh, hand out the prizes. So if Dave is around, right there, here he comes. Dave. Oh. Thanks, Jeff. Shall I proceed? Yes. I'm Dave Moore. I invented the Wi-Fi shootout contest last year, and the event has taken off beyond my wildest expectations. However, this year I realized, I think you need to hook that up back there, don't you? Oh, is it? I'm sorry. I'll keep talking. This year I realized that I was going to need a tremendous amount of help, otherwise the contest was not going to take place. So I asked ASL Rules team, they were the overall winners in last year's competition, if they would run the contest this year. Thank you. They agreed to do it, and it is because of their help that we are here today. They've been a spectacular group to work with, and over the past few months I've also learned that uh, they are much scarier hackers than I had originally thought. <laughs> So this year, instead of competing, they helped to secure sponsors, ran the contest in the field, and I thank them with all my heart. I also want to thank Jeff Moss and the DEF CON staff for allowing us to hold the contest in conjunction with DEF CON. Uh, they've been good to us, and I hope that our contest has contributed to the overall DEF CON experience. Thank you, yeah. sir. The basic rules of the Wi-Fi shootout contest are simple. Set up a pair of computers, get an 802.11b Wi-Fi radio working on each one, and then see how far apart you can get and still maintain a connection. Contestants submit to a very stringent distance verification process, and it's a lot of fun to see these rigs work. I need to thank our sponsors. Our premier sponsor, Wired Magazine. Thanks, Maya. Also, Assured InfoSec, Jeffatech, Anisan Associates, ConfigureSoft, Symantec, Pasadena Networks, Netgear, O'Reilly Books, Broadband Wireless Exchange Magazine, Jinx Gamers, Geeks and Hackers, with the coolest shirts in town, Wireless Fidelity Magazine, and Exchange Magazine. Without our awesome sponsors, this contest would not have happened. I also have to thank our contestants. They traveled a long way to get here. They worked hard and they slogged it out in the desert heat, the wind, <laughs> which was brutal yesterday. Uh, the direct sunlight, which I cannot take, and they are to be admired. One team in particular is to be applauded because they achieved what we believe is a new world's record in their category, about which you will hear more after I turn the microphone over to Ben of ASL Rules. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dave. We had uh, six teams come out and compete this year, which really blew us away. We had no idea how many people to expect. Uh, we'd like to thank uh, Rangebox, 4DI, Bang SXE Crew, Turbo Crew, Seattle Wireless, and PAD for coming out of the desert this year. Our zeroth prize goes to uh, both 4DI and Bang SXE Crew. These guys were considering our honorable mention category. They showed up. They did register to compete in a few uh, few categories, but unfortunately, they were not successful in uh, in establishing contact and could not get any official distance measurements down on the books uh, because of that. We would like to give each of those teams uh, a set of books and some cash uh, prize for showing up. Uh, we do have a lot of O'Reilly books here. We have SSH, the Sec Secure Shell Handbook, uh, Network Security Hacks, Network Security Assessment, uh, and the Linux Security Cookbook. So we'd like those guys to come up if they're here and grab a copy of all these books and some Best Buy gift certificates. Are they here?
They don't appear to be here. We've got $250 uh, for each of those teams in uh, Best Buy gift certificates and books. I guess hopefully their email addresses are accurate. We'll uh, get them to them later. Just for showing up. <laughs> yeah, they didn't even uh, they didn't even establish a link here. More people come out next year, please. <laughs> so that was our zero with prize. Here's our, our first prize we're going to award: our commercial uh, amplified uh, antenna uh, category. Basically, we had four categories: take commercial antennas on uh, both ends and put an amplifier on them. Establish a link. That's one category. Take commercial an antennas, don't amplify them. Establish a link. That was the second category. Take at least one homebrew antenna on at least one end and amplify it. That was the third category. Take at least one homebrew antenna on both on one end and don't amplify it. That was the fourth category. So here we actually had some people competing, uh, but we can't award a prize because we didn't get any official distance measure measurements recorded. Uh, we're going to now proceed uh, from the shortest distance achieved out to the greatest distance achieved. So the next category we'd like to provide an award for is the most innovative antenna. And that goes to Turbo Crew with 0.82 miles. What you see here is an assortment of cardboard, duct tape, and if you're familiar with the shield or the, the shiny shields that people in their, put it in their windshields of their cars to keep the heat reflected out, that's what this antenna is made of, and that's really cool. They achieved 0.82 miles with it. Uh, it was not amplified, um, but we'd like to give some prizes for that. So we're going to give them a stack of O'Reilly books. We have an additional one in their pile called Hardware Hacking Projects for Geeks. We have some antennas from Pasadena Networks we'd like to give them. We have some Jinx Hackerware. Now, I don't know for sure here, but it's my understanding we're giving them a t-shirt and a pair of ladies panties and someone told me they want to see them demonstrated or modeled. <laughs> We're also giving this team uh, $500 in Best Buy gift certificates and we're going to give them a copy of Wi-Fi toys in the backyard or down the street. This is war driving. There's a bunch, bunch of more words on here. I'm sure you can read them on your own time. Are, are, the, are the ladies who uh, showed up in the desert this year here? Oh, they're coming up. say Mata Fork with uh, parentheses, you know, the Unix command. Uh, so, <laughs> we won't hold you to it. <laughs> Is that everything? Books? Uh, we got the uh, the books, the Pasadena antennas, oh, Pasadena antenna. the Jinx hacker. Yeah, you guys were building your own antennas out there from scratch, so we decided we'd help you out with some hardware here. Okay, the next longest distance achieved was the commercial category, commercial antennas with no amplifier. Uh, range box achieved 14.0 miles. Congratulations to them. I would like to mention something about the picture you're looking at. This is not near a road. It was 109 degrees. They're about 700 feet in elevation off the road and about a thousand foot walk from the road. I went up there just for fun and I didn't enjoy it. These guys are crazy. <laughs> uh, for them, we'd like to give them the, the, uh, the pile of O'Reilly books, the extra book uh, that just was just recently published, I believe. Uh, we have a $200 gift certificate to CCNY, CCNY Computer Co Connection of Central New York. They're basically a sun shop. They have a lot of cool sun hardware and really good prices. Uh, so we'd like to give that to them. We have a Jinx Hackerware shirt or two, I believe. And again, we have $500 in Best Buy gift certificates for them. Please give them a hand. Okay, so here's uh, 
The next greatest distance achieved was uh, in the homemade antenna category uh, with amplifiers in use. This particular team, PAD, um, built antennas on both ends, so both ends were homebrew, and they used amplifiers on both ends for this particular win. Um, these guys are not about 700 feet in elevation, they're only about 500 feet, but I'll still give them credit for hiking up there. I don't know if you can see much in this picture here, but that's all steel construction. And I'm glad I'm not the one carrying it up in the mountain on 190 degree, 109 degrees. That is homemade. Um, so these guys actually have uh, aiming equipment on this thing. And if you think this is impressive, wait until you see what's on their trailer. These guys drove from Ohio. And they have a trailer with, correct me if I'm wrong, a 9 foot 4 inch diameter dish mounted on the top of this trailer, which th <laughs> they're happy to drive down the road at 55 miles an hour. I wasn't very near them when they were doing that. <laughs> they also have aiming equipment on that dish. And uh, these guys were really cool. They started out by achieving a 5 mile link to get something on the books. Then they went out to about 14 miles, I believe. And then they went out. Uh, and toyed around at 30 some odd miles, and then they decided to get serious. And uh, <laughs> these guys, uh, I don't know if anybody remembers, but last year was the, 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 grand the grand prize went to 35 some odd miles. These guys uh, started driving down the road, and they looked at Topo USA, which is a software program, and they called out some coordinates, and we said, well, if they're actually going to achieve this, we better, we better head down the road ourselves. So we rented a, an H2 this year, and it's a good thing we did, because uh, we ended up going down a dirt road for several miles, and uh, it was a lot of fun driving the H2. Anybody should try it. And uh, it ended up, these guys got out in the field uh, very near the end of the competition and achieved successfully in this category 55.1 miles. Uh, the amplification was uh, 600 milliwatts on each end. They were using Orinoco cards, which many people know put out 32 milliwatts, and uh, they put that up to 600 milliwatts into each of these dishes. Somewhere after uh, this record here of 55.1 miles, they flipped the hood up on their, the minivan, which, uh, you know, it's, it's not a brand new vehicle. They started putting duct tape under the hood to hold the car together. They wanted to seal some dust out. They heated up some chicken nuggets from... Uh, from Burger King to you know for dinner, we'd like to give these guys uh, some O'Reilly books. Uh, we've got some Jinx hackerware for them. We've got five hundred dollars in Best Buy gift certificates, um, and we've got that other book, that third one from the other author. Okay, so if those guys can come up and accept their prize, that would be really cool. Don't let these guys sit down yet, because uh, after they achieved this distance, somebody had the silly idea, well, hey, we're using amplifiers. Let's take the amplifiers out. So uh, they did. And uh, <laughs> it is my distinct pleasure and honor on behalf of the entire DEF CON 12 Wi-Fi shootout team to announce to you a brand new world record for the greatest distance achieved for an 802.11b network with no amplification, 55.1 miles. So we'd like to tack on another $500 in Best Buy gift certificates. <laughs> and
And uh, what the heck, we'll give them some Netgear hardware we got donated from Netgear. Yeah, Yeah, we got an access point and I think four PCI cards there. And um, according to the contest rules, we have to give out a prize for the greatest distance achieved in the entire contest. So uh, why not? 55.1 miles, no amplification. (laughs) Give them another 500 hours, please. I think we will all agree with me that these guys uh, are certainly deserving of what they're getting now. The Uber Hacker badges. Did we give them a stack of O'Reilly books? I think we already did. We've got one last O'Reilly book here, 802.11 Wireless Networks. And uh, (laughs) if if you can all stand to listen to them, we'd like to ask them to come up here and just talk for one minute or two about the drive across the country, maybe about how much money they put into this, and uh, a little bit about if they had any fun or not. I don't know. I'm not sure. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm going to turn it over to these guys and let them wrap up for the Wi-Fi Shootout 2004. Thank you very much. Okay, well, about uh, 19 days ago, I guess, we were surfing on the web after a business plan we had created uh, fell through. We were going to war drive around Cincinnati and find unencrypted wireless access points, and uh, we knocked at people's doors and asked them if we wanted to encrypt them. They just got all freaked out and slammed the door. Um, so we were searching for other things to do with the equipment we had just purchased and built. We had some uh, Cantana Yagis and stuff. And Andy here came across the Wi-Fi shootout webpage. And he's like, hey, Ben, uh, in a couple days, we're going to go to Las Vegas. And I was like, yeah, right. And he showed me. And um, we're like, well, maybe we could do this. So I called Justin here. And um, he was on the cell phone with his girlfriend. I said, hey, dude, we're going to Las Vegas in like 19 days. And he's like, yeah, right. And I was like, no, I'm not kidding. And um, He's like, I'm talking to my girlfriend. Call, I'll talk to you later. And I was like, call me back. And he doesn't call me back. Um, so we started working on this. Um, mostly Andy and I, we had collected some nine and a half foot satellite dishes from around Cincinnati over the past couple of years. We were planning on putting them up on towers behind our houses and sharing our broadband internet connections. <laughs> um, Due to uh, complications and uh, parental restrictions, um, that never happened. But we had we still had the dishes laying in our backyards, and we're like, well, what the hell? Why not? Um, so we got them out. We started building feeds for them. Uh, we started with a biquad that didn't work out because it didn't illuminate the whole dish. So we switched to a patch antenna and uh, built that up. Did all the calculations to figure out how far out it needed to be, and then we started building the mounts um, that you saw on the pictures. Um, one of them was designed, the one that was mounted on a trailer was actually designed to fit in Andy's pickup truck, um, which has been driven all over Cincinnati with the dish inside of it, strapped down um, to try and find links, which are impossible in Cincinnati because there are lots of trees and hills. Um, but we had a good time with that. And so after that, we um, about two or three days before we decided to leave, we were going to leave, um, we went out and did our first test. And we got two and a half miles, and the link was better than we had with our laptops sitting right next to each other in our bedrooms. <laughs> so Andy's dad, who um, thought we were crazy and is an RF engineer, looked at our data and said, oh my god, they might have a chance at this. They might actually have to go to Las Vegas. <laughs> So we, um, we worked on it some more. We got everything working. We 
borrowed some amplifiers from a company called RF Links in Cincinnati, Ohio, who um, were very generous and um, gave us a 30-day loan on the amplifiers at 600 milliwatts. We almost got 8-watt ones. Not that we would have needed them, but, uh, <laughs> but they were a, a very generous company. And uh, if you guys are looking for amplifiers for the 802.11b or G equipment, uh, I would highly recommend them. And um, so we got those. We did an eight and a half, no, it was a nine mile link in Cincinnati. Um, worked great. And so we went home, had a meeting with our parents where they tried to talk us out of it. <laughs> um, and the next day we were packing. And um, so we had too many people to fit in the truck. So we decided to take the van and tow the trailer behind. And um, so here we are, and we got out here, we set it all up, had a blast doing it, and um, now we have to figure out how to get home. And <laughs> if any of you guys would like to help us out with that, our equipment is for sale. <laughs> I'm, I'm not kidding. Um, it is all disassembled. It fits in the back of a pickup truck. And if you want to talk to us about it, we'd be very interested in talking about it. We'll probably be over there by the doors at the end. So if any of you need a, the equipment, uh, we, we really do uh, want to get rid of it before we go back to Cincinnati. Um, but we had a great time. I'll let some of these other guys talk. Yeah. I it was kind of a crazy idea, but it worked out in the end. And we put a lot of hard work in, especially working around our other jobs. But we put the time in and due to experience we'd had in the past a little bit with already collecting the dishes. Unfortunately, we had to go and get some linear actuators that had broken before and fix those up and get everything mounted. But the whole process was a lot of fun. And I'd just like to thank everybody who helped us out, especially RF Links for the amplifiers. I just want to say to anyone who's interested in competing next year, um, do it. It's a lot of fun. It was like 110 degrees or something like that, and we lugged satellite fish up the side of the mountain. Yeah. But uh, it was a lot of fun, and, and it can be done. But, uh, I mean, looking at the numbers we had, theoretically we could have gone further, but there was no road left. We had traveled. <laughs> we... Uh, We might be building some bigger dishes and uh, trying to go further, but we'll see what happens in the future. And like I said, if anyone is interested in doing it, it's a lot of fun. Come on out. Thanks. I'd also like to thank the ASL Rules team for all the work they did in the organization and setting up a crossband repeater that worked when our communications didn't, so we'd really like to thank them. About 33 dB. Do you ever plan on having kids? <laughs> okay, well, not nearly as impressive as that. Um, I have a, quickly, a quick impromptu award to give. Um, it's not really a contest, but it sort of became a contest. If I could get Paul Proctor to stand up here for a second, you know what's coming. Um, go on, Paul. Stand up. Get your ass up here. So, uh, Paul's having... Uh, dinner with this guy, uh, Nick Farr. If you're out there, Nick, you're going to be put on the spot in a second. And they're having a, they're having a burger, the old In-N-Out burger. And for those of you who live in a location that doesn't have an In-N-Out burger, you can, uh, you can realize how important it is for us to get to an In-N-Out burger while we're in Vegas. So uh, Nick Farr uh, pulls up and Paul Proctor pulls up, orders a burger. Nick Farr says, hey, that sounds good, and orders a 10 patty burger and eats it. And uh, 
And he, he looks up at Paul and says, you know, I could probably do 20. <laughs> and, uh, and so Paul says, you're on. So uh, that was Friday night. Saturday night, Paul shows up with a 20 patty burger out by the pool one here. And uh, mayhem ensues. Quickly, we're throwing down money. People are gambling on whether he can handle it or not. <laughs> and uh, it turns into a pretty good contest. I'm going I'm to let Paul finish it up here. But uh, there was talk of a head-to-head deathmatch kumite 30 patty battle. <laughs> Yeah, so when he, when he bought this 10-patty burger, I mean, we, he walks up and in and out, and he says, uh, he says, yeah, I want a 10-patty burger. I said, you've got to be kidding me. And, uh, yeah, they sit there, and they, they say, extra patty, 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 <laughs> patty, patty, patty. So, and you should have seen the, well, when we went in the next night, we got the 20-patty burger. I think that it was, it was worth the 14 bucks for the burger just to see the look <laughs> on the face. And, and I'll tell you honestly, we're, we are, we're considering a contest for next year. Now, now we, we do not know what this contest will look like, but it will probably involve a lot of cow. So, uh, you know, uh, pay attention to the contest website for next year, and uh, if you feel like you can do 30 or more, uh, bring it on. Now, where, where's, where's my man, Nick? Nick's brushing his teeth. <laughs> I cannot believe what X just told me. He says, Nick is brushing his teeth. <laughs> Probably still from that burger. Well, listen, when, when Nick... When, oh, my God. <laughs> so they, I didn't even realize this. They got Nick a prize. This is the uh, sergeant from Full Metal Jacket. <laughs> All right. R. Lee Irving. All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whip up! Take a damn shit down your neck! Where the hell? Is that coming through? Push with my button again, and I'll punch you in the stunt locker so goddamn hard! <laughs> <laughs> So you're, you're all going to have trouble because Nick's got motivation for next year. When he he is he is not here right now, but when oh he's on his way. Here he is. <laughs> Nick has, doesn't even know why he's on stage yet. <laughs> So this is kind of a surprise. Nobody told us they were going to do this. So uh, anyway, uh, this is Nick. He's the man. We're, we're considering a contest for next year. You are obviously, you have set the mark. And uh, for that, we have bought you some uh, motivation for next year. This is the sergeant from Full Metal Jacket. He was, when you came in, he was entertaining the audience. So you'll, you'll have little uh, things to listen to like this. Did the 30 patty kumite happen? Huh? The 30 patty kumite. <laughs> then, uh, we bailed because we're going to put a contest together. Oh. How many for next year? How many for 30? How many thinks you can do 30? Okay, so I, I used to live in California. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, hell no. You're going to put Tabasco or something and make me throw up. Um, so I, uh, I moved back to Michigan after living in California for two years, and I hadn't been to In-N-Out in almost a year. So, you know, Proctor, me and a couple of the other speaker goons decided to go there. And, you know, I, I know the whole secret In-N-Out ordering, foo, all of that. So I said, yeah, just give me a 10-patty animal burger. And so they give it to me. Proctor... He looks and he's like, they can do that? <laughs> I said, yeah, they can do that. So I, you know, feeding for an out, I hadn't eaten anything all day. So, you know, just chowing down. I finish it before he finishes his double-double. <laughs> and so he gets the bright idea, you think you can do 20? So he says, yeah, you know, we, 
we've got your 20 patty pickles. I'm like, I, I didn't know this. He's like, no, no, come over to the pool. I'm like, okay. So you go over to the pool. And then this crowd, out of nowhere, <laughs> envelops. M from LA was just getting crazy, taking bets. How many for? How many yes? How many for? And there was this, this like pile of cash in front of you. And I was just, you know, enjoying my dinner. And it was all good. <laughs> So are you guys trying to tell me you want me to do 55 next year? Yeah! I'd say 30 is plenty. What? Where's Humperdank? I want to point out, just before he ate the 20 patty burger, we were sitting over at In-N-Out with the actual burger and some other people with us. He's eating French fries. <laughs> They're good fries. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys next year. <laughs> okay, now we're into the liquid category, coffee wars. And uh, coffee wars usually happens really early Friday morning. And there's quite a competition that runs off, and they tabulate their results uh, pretty much all weekend long in order to give you uh, the grand totals now. So I want to hand it over to Fufus. He's going to tell you a little bit about the contest and uh, how that was judged and who won. Thank you. Well, uh, once again, Coffee Wars was just a monstrous success, and it's an honor to be up here yet again sharing the excitement. Um, before we uh, present our grand prize, I'd like to touch on a couple of highlights. This year, we did not have to turn anyone away, which was great. Last year, we had uh, some capacity planning troubles, and way more people brought coffee than we were ready to handle. And then this year, as always, the Alexis Park staff came through for us. Uh, we needed a big garbage can with a liner in it, and they were right there on the spot, and once again, uh, were great. And we didn't confuse them this time. Usually, they're a little leery that people are setting up coffee pots, but it was all taken care of. And again, uh, once again, as always, the DEF CON staff were great. Uh, thanks to Dark Tan Black Beetle, Russ, and Pyro. It was the smoothest running uh, show that we've had. Um, we got started a little late, but uh, everything was as it should have been. We also need to recognize the staff, uh, who are the heart of Coffee Wars, uh, Alice and Mad Hat, who, uh, <laughs> who kept things running um, uh, smoothly when, uh, when the rest of us got confused. Shirley, once again, as always, was the, uh, the core organizer, the keeper of the equipment, the master brewer, and also the coordinator of shirt acquisition. As a side note, the proceeds from Coffee Wars shirt sales were all donated to uh, uh, EFF. <laughs> the, uh, the rest of the staff and the judges were also essential, uh, Gurney, Rob, Tim, Lucid, and Tweaked. Thank you very much. Coffee Wars wishes to extend a special greeting to Jay Dyson, who was unable to be with us, uh, but sent some really good beans. We're thinking of you, man. Um, there are two honors in Coffee Wars, the grand prize, for which we have a prize, and then the best bang for the buck brew, which doesn't really get a prize, but you can feel really good about yourself. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the latter, uh, is, which is the bang for the buck, is given to the coffee whose uh, overall approval is the highest, uh, ratio of overall approval to price is the highest. So the average price per pound of coffee entered this year was $15.38, which is pretty middle of the road. But when you consider that we had four, uh, four entries that were over $30, um, you can see that you know, the average price is actually pretty reasonable, you know, the, the sort of a median price would be. So previously, the bang for the buck winner was always uh, a, a coffee that was close actually in approval to the overall winner, but was a little cheaper. Um, this year's strategist, uh, oh, oh, this year's award went to a, a contestant who supplied actually a, a reasonably good coffee, but not that super highly loved, but it was at the rock bottom price of only $4.99 a pound. So there's no prize, but we salute you, spy boy, wherever you are. Um, we don't have a prize for you, but we respect your skills. Um. <laughs> This year's uh, winner is an expensive coffee, but not the most expensive. Um, entries from Jay Dyson and God Minus One and Decula all surpassed it in price. But the winning coffee was the winner by a wide margin, um, a full 16% ahead of the second place uh, entry, which was from Jay. So uh, both of those coffees, Jay's and the winner, were from the same plantation. And our winner had uh, found a way to acquire the pea berry instead of the regular bean, and also uh, had fed exed it to himself from Jamaica for maximum freshness. So, so damn, that was some fine coffee. Uh, 
So our prize this year is the same as last year, courtesy of uh, Van Hall, one of our judges. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, in terms of, so, sort of street or market value, but we also uh, have an additional honor uh, that it makes it all the more precious. It's a shirt. Can you hold this up, Mad Hat? Um, that, uh, uh, you know, that, that uh, says the Coffee Wars champion and, you know, commemorates that. So, um, oh, yes, and the, the back says uh, Jamaican Blue Mountain for the fifth year, but who's counting? Um, so, uh, our winner, you know, is, is no stranger to Coffee Wars Triumph, uh, and instead of, um, uh, you know, th this, this, this one-of-a-kind shirt is, <laughs> is going to let the world know of your victory, sir, and at $29 with an overall approval score of precisely 8.0, the winner is Jamaican Blue Mountain Wallenford Estates from uh, Peabury from Hook. Hook, are you here? Look, what inspired you to enter that same coffee again? Seeing you guys at the end of the match. <laughs> no more! Thanks a lot. Enjoy. Congratulations. Congratulations. Woo! Pops going out to 916, baby. Okay, next up. Um, we're going to get a, uh, where's Grifter? There's Grifter. Grifter's going to come up and hand out, uh, talk a little bit about the scavenger hunt and the latest link, two things he was involved with, and uh, hand out the awards and uh, talk a little bit about the future of both contests. So with that said, let's welcome Grifter, who puts a lot of energy into running the shows. Thanks. Um, I'll start off with the latest link. This was the first year for the latest link. Uh, we had a couple of technical difficulties that kept us from uh, showing its full potential, but um, on the second night, I think we had a, a really great time. We had a good turnout, and more and more people kept showing up as the night went on. Um, we had two different hosts. Uh, the host for Friday night was Slee Stack, if you're here. I guess he's not here. And the host for the um, second night was Disobedient. Are you here? Anyone? Anyone? No? I guess not. Uh, anyway, so uh, we went through a phenomenal amount of questions. Uh, the questions were generally uh, technical, but we threw in a lot of things like Simpsons trivia and stuff like that for people who just wanted to get up on stage and uh, have some free beers on Jeff. Um, <laughs> And uh, we had a really great time, and we understand that a lot of you uh, have expressed that you like team-structured games rather than individuals, while a you know the other half of you like being up there as an individual and competing against your friends. So next year we're thinking about doing a team game one night and then a, an individual game the next night. Uh, Wynn has expressed uh, perhaps bringing back Hacker Jeopardy for one of those nights. So we have a whole year to plan and we will keep you posted so keep looking at defcon.org for details. Um, so after several rounds and into the final round with some absolute insanity on the part of Humperdinck, Flea, uh, <laughs> Humberding's brother, who screamed the entire time. <laughs> uh, phenomenal lungs on that man. Um, but the the winner uh, of the of the first round, and then eventually of the uh, the contest uh, on Saturday night, uh, our first leadest link is Vicky. Vicky, if you're here, there she is. And we have a DEF CON leather jacket, the coveted leather jacket, and a black badge for Vicky, so. <laughs> Ask her what her strategy was. Then we need you to talk just a little bit about your strategy. <laughs> well, uh, thanks everybody. After losing Hacker Jeopardy so many times, it feels really good to finally have the black jacket. <laughs> Now I can get closer to being cool like Kevin Mitnick. Just a little bit closer. Um, 
Yes, I also am from Chicago, so this will come in handy. And uh, right, so the strategy was get on stage, and then there was a bunch of alliances, and eventually people started pouring beer on each other. That kind of I think that was a big part of the strategy, also. <laughs> and I'd like to thank everyone I played with for not pouring beer on my head. So thank you. Uh, I'm going to steal a couple of seconds before I talk about the scavenger hunt just to mention real quick. It's not a contest, but um, uh, DC801 and rootcompromise.org is the uh, group from Utah, and we uh, wrote all the questions for the latest link, and then we also do the DEF CON movie channel. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the DEF CON movie channel this year. We'll be back again next year, and we will be putting up a suggestion script for, on defcontv.org uh, for anything you'd like to see change, things added, um, and what's that? Yeah, and you can submit filler content and things like that. Uh, my email address is pretty easy, grifter at defcon.org. So if you have something, send it to me, or uh, send it to grifter801 at gmail if it's a gigantic file. Um, now, on to the scavenger hunt. Uh, due to doing so many things, gooning, speaking, yada, 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 uh, I was away from the scavenger hunt table quite a bit this year and didn't get to see the insanity that ensued as much as I would have liked to. But one of the uh, 801 crew will come up here and uh, let you know all about it. So uh, without further ado, here is A. All right, uh, for those of you who don't know, the scavenger hunt is uh, one of the longer running contests here at DEF CON. Uh, DC801 and uh, Root Compromise, we've been doing it for, is this our third year there, Grifter? Yeah, third year. And uh, I think we had a great time this year. Uh, I think that I actually have more fun than the, uh, the entrance every year, so it really makes the con for me. Uh, a couple example items. Uh, my favorite was the drunken, what was that? No, the lingerie was enjoyable, that's for sure, a lingerie show, uh, but uh, the Drunken Whore's Keg Tap, it was stolen last year, so it was an impromptu item, and so this year we made it, uh, you need to bring it to us, so uh, one team actually did talk them out of it. Uh, we also had such things as uh, coin buckets from different hotels, tinfoil swimsuits, uh, finding out the zip code of Mount Kisco, New York, uh, mashed potatoes and gravity, you decide the rest. It's one of my favorites for 100 points. Uh, and then uh, one that actually drew a little bit of flack from the crew, uh, understandably, make a huge straw and drink a full can of Mountain Dew from the roof of Parthenon by Pool 1. Can must be on the ground by the pool. Uh, two teams, as far as I know, completed this. About 30 feet worth of tubing uh, from one team, and then uh, it was at least 30 some odd straws, electrical tape together. Uh, <laughs> for the other. It was quite the sight. And it took probably 10 plus minutes and a couple of people on each team to get it done. So we have video. Uh, we're going to try and get it up here as soon as we can. It'll be on scavengerhunt.org. And uh, yeah, so uh, go ahead with the awarding of the prizes. Uh, we have prizes donated by, I think, every vendor. Uh, these guys are always great to us every year. They, they hook us up. Or rather, they hook the winners up. So, uh, third place with 2,056 points is Hot Broccoli. And if you guys would stand and wave and, uh, yeah, we'll actually... Yeah. The only uh, all-female team, so, and they, they kicked major ass. So, uh, if you guys want to grab your prize box afterwards, just grab me. Uh, we had, I think, seven that really competed. We had a couple more that, that put in, you know, a couple hours and then gave up, but uh, we, we had quite a bit. It was a race down to the end, uh, and I'll get into that here in a minute. Uh, second place team, local boys and girls from uh, right here in Vegas, DC702 with 3,065 points. Uh, I believe they're over here. Go ahead and stand up, guys. Wave. So. Much love to the local guys. So. And um, then in first place, uh, we had we left on an item uh, semi-purposefully that didn't have a limit on it. It was tabs off of soda cans, one point each. And this is actually for a charity, the Ronald McDonald House. And so we thought, you know, it'd be a good good item to do. And uh, the Corps of Social Engineers brought in approximately seven thousand plus. 
tabs off of cans. My bad. 8,500 some odd. Um, I'm sure that they will tell you the exact number if you want. Uh, and uh, they, they almost won without them, I must say. They played a very good game. It's the, the winning teams, or the people from the first, the second, and the third place teams from last year all got together and came and kicked some ass. So, uh, where did you guys get them? Yep, okay, so uh, DC702, get your prizes afterwards. We got a box full of cool swag. And then uh, DC702, five team members come on up. We've got a special prize for you. The Cola of Social Engineers, a.k.a. Exodus. Uh, first up here, no, no Christopher's actually going to get your, what? all right, uh, here we have Civiac, this is High Wiz, this is Ecstasy, we've got Londo and uh, Kelvin. So we have black badges for each of them, lifetime admission to the con. And if uh, one of you wants to be the spokesperson, then come on up and let us know how it worked. So uh, once again, thanks for a uh, great con. Thanks for DC for letting us do this and uh, raise hell every year, uh, all of our sponsors. So uh, scavengerhunt.org will have the final scores, the breakdown, and some media here in a couple weeks. So, Sidiac. Thanks, guys. Is it just me or does that table have the finest hair in all of DEF CON? Between A and Grifter, these guys are hot. Um, it's been five years. It's been a long time. Uh, I enjoy it. It's the, one of the only reasons I keep coming back, that and the free booze. Um, I'd like to thank Spackle, uh, Blossom, High Wizard, the entire team, all the DEF CON staff, every last one of the goons. Um, Katie did, Daenerys, Stitch, oh, God minus one, Pez, who am I missing? Octopus, Cryonic. It's been, it's been five years. <laughs> um, Pinguino, for starting this entire addiction. I'm out. I've done it five years. It's been a good run. Guys, come compete. Um, I'm hoping to help out next year. See what we can do. Put it, put together an even better hunt. Guys, thanks. Okay, uh, we're coming in toward the end here. There's only uh, three more con. <laughs> There's only a couple contests left. Uh, here's one that's uh, near and dear to our hearts. It's the War Drive contest. Uh, Roma here, who's uh, <clears throat> drawn a lot of attention to this issue, has done some big worldwide war drives, helped organize and run this year's War Drive contest, so I want to pass it off to him. He's going to uh, tell you a little bit about how the contest has changed over the years and who the winners are. So here you go, Roman. Thank you very much. Um, basically, what we have done in the past is just have everybody drive around Las Vegas and try and find as many access points as they can in a real s short period of time. Uh, we kind of decided to change things up this year, and rather than do that, uh, we were going to let people drive as much as they wanted to. And um, some people really, really drove a lot. I think the person that won ended up driving about 60 hours this time. Um, we also decided that because um, most people were not going to be willing to invest their entire con experience into driving around Las Vegas, uh, we put in some mini games. And I'll talk about each of those a little bit as, as we get to them. Um, first of all, I want to uh, get a couple of people to come up here and uh, be recognized. Um, Renderman. One Master, Brenda Man, yes. Brenda Man, Pantera, One Master, and One Master's partner, whoever he was. All right, one of the games that we had this year for the mini games was called Tag, which was basically, um, oh, you know what? I totally spaced on something. I forgot to uh, thank the contest staff who really kicked ass this year. They were working nonstop, and they're all standing and sitting right over here. Um, Aaron, Thorne, Medic, who is out here, Dara, who is our running man, we'll talk about, and me. Oh, and Converge, Jesus. Converge. <laughs> For those of you who didn't know, Converge basically spent his entire DEF CON trying to score these, uh, the drives because the 
size of the files that people were dumping were so huge. So thanks, man. I'll buy you a beer or something. Um, now, back to the tag game. These four guys were on two separate teams for the tag game. Tag was sponsored by Fabcor, and they gave us some outstanding prizes. What they needed to do was find an access point that I had located somewhere in the Alexis Park that was transmitting on low power, and then there was a Windows 2000 box sitting behind it that they basically needed to own well enough to be able to drop a, t a text file on the desktop. I really thought that by giving them three hours they would have enough time, especially when they found the access point itself within about seven minutes and then proceeded to spend the next three and a half hours beating against the box and not being able to get into it. But wait, there's more. We were sniffing all their traffic, which will be available on the website. Um, when we particularly decided it was worth uh, giving these guys a little recognition was when all of their logs, we watched them, and they actually brute forced the right accounts. We had two, not one, but two accounts set up that the password was the username. <laughs> Homeland Security should be very afraid. <laughs> but because they did work their ass off for that long, I decided to go ahead and give them the prizes rather than try and take them home with me. So, uh, Aaron, if you could... Help me out here. The prizes from Fabcorp this time around, and you can split them up however you want to in these, um, are a Orinoco card, a 5 DBI Omni, pigtails, and a 5 watt amp. So, lit it up and enjoy, gentlemen. And go sit down. Some of you will be back. Actually, the man, why don't you go ahead and stay up here. We'll go ahead and... One of the other games we did was called Fox and the Hound. That was basically we had a, an access point set up off-site away from the Alexis Park that was transmitting on low power and um, was only broadcasting for 15 seconds out of every minute, and then it would go out offline. Um, the goal on this one was to actually physically track this one down. The, the winning contestant who was Renderman uh, had to actually find the, the hotel room that it was in and walk up to it and knock on the door to win. And we, again, we gave three hours for that, and Render Man owned that in 35 minutes. It was a fantastic job, so. Mm -hmm. I figure, yeah, his partner to come on up. You probably all saw Render Man walking around with the render rig. This thing is hot! Render Man's partner on that one. Hold it up Yeah, hold it up. Render Man's partner on this one was Deviant, and you guys really did a great job. I figured after a little humiliation for Render Man, I deserve to go ahead and recognize the work he did that was good. Um, do you have anything that you want to say? Well, originally Panthera was going to be my partner on this, but we had a polka-related accident at the German beer house, so he was really <laughs> unable to walk. So Deviant here stepped up. Um, this rig was sort of a last minute. <laughs> Last minute idea. It worked really great. I will be posting designs and everything. Um, the hotel staff at the Amera Suites, thank you for not throwing things at me or like getting security guards on my ass walking through the hotel with this thing. And thanks to Thorne. Um, I just want to know why you didn't have any cold beer for us in the room when we came knocking on the door. So. <laughs> Sorry. That's it, I guess. Let me give you some prizes. Uh, this contest was uh, sponsored by both NetStumbler and Michigan Wireless. And we have for you guys two 24 dBi Voggies and one 5 dBi Omni. So enjoy. Uh, no, I'm a little busy right now. Say hello. Yeah. I'll call you back later. <laughs> Woo! All right. Next was the Running Man. Um, running Man, we uh, basically had a person walking around with a Zaurus and that was had an Apache web server running on it. The point of this one was to find the Apache web server, um, uh, grab some files off of it, decrypt them, and then determine who the running man was, approach that person and say, are you the running man? Um, 
unfortunately, yet again, we did not have anyone with any ma major skills because they could not do it. But we did find we did have two guys that came very, very close, and if they had had a little bit more time, they probably would have. We only ran that contest for about an hour and a half because the Zaurus battery was going to die. Um, so if I could get uh, William Barnes and Eric Smith to come up. This contest was sponsored by um, Blackthorn Systems, and uh, Thorn has donated a Linksys WRT54G um, access point. They also get the Running Man contest winner badge. Congratulations. Um, did you guys have anything that you wanted to say real quick? We did crack it. I had a lot of fun. I uh, hope we have uh, some more people competing next year. I think one of the biggest problems that people have with the Running Man was actually that we did not use a man for the Running Man. We used a girl. If she would stand up there, she was our Running Man. Thank you. Thanks a lot, guys. Good job. Now, the last thing we had was the main drive. The main drive winner this year really, really put a lot of time into it, and he has also been publicly humiliated once today, so I'm going to call him back up here. Um, this time around, we found um, over 20,000 access points and 20,753. We did find one of the contestants did have some fake AP stuff in their log that we had to drop out. Um, the, the second place on this who gets nothing except for to kick himself for driving that much time and not winning was with 109,238 points was Hratch. Which basically means that the only other person that's actually insane enough to drive around Vegas that long and, and win was with 128,876 points, one master. Come back up. This time around, they get um, from DEFCON, the coveted leather jacket. The coveted black badge. They also get a um, copy of Wi-Fi toys and we're driving. I'm a big fan of that one. If you haven't bought it, go get it right now. Uh, yeah, actually, we all signed it for you, too. So you're in good shape there. And uh, the main prize that this time around was donated by Fabcorp as well. Um, it was It is $500 cash money. Um, Andre, would you like to talk a little bit about your drive? Well, um, yeah, this is quite fun if you uh, think that sitting in, alone in your car in 12 hours, driving from 6 uh, in the evening to 6 in the morning. Uh, Chris had uh, told that I was driving for 60 hours, but I would only drive for 16 hours, so it wasn't that long time. But uh, great fun, and the only reason I keep coming back is that Chris is always pissing me off. <laughs> Andre actually threatened to register ChrisSucks.com after last year's contest. Um, also, I wanted to go ahead and get Random Man and Deviant back up here, give them their books and their badges, and then get off of the stage. So those are for you. Right on. I'll do it right now. All right. I also have a ton more of the war driving books signed by the authors. Who wants them? Oh. Easy, careful. Right here. All right. Okay. 
the bartender's getting that one. Let's hear it for the bartenders. Excellent. So this is the uh, first year that we've had new management at the Alexis Park, and so far they seem to have treated us pretty well. So I think I think we're pretty happy with them, wouldn't you say? Pretty good? Yeah. Okay, so this next one is not necessarily really a contest, but sort of a, a way of placing value on vengeance, and it was the dunk tank. And um, uh, Dead Addict had this great idea. Um, after seeing it happen during this one parade of having a dunk tank. And we thought, hey, that would be fantastic. We'll get everybody in there. We'll get all the feds to be dunked. And pretty soon that means that I'm going to have to be dunked. Zach's going to have to be dunked. Pretty much everybody's going to have to get dunked. And uh, that means we're going to make some money and hopefully enough money to pay for the rental of this thing and the liability and all the insurance and all this other paperwork that had to go along with it. So, um, so we decided the money should probably go to the EFF. They've been around a long time, and they generally really stick to their principles. And uh, so I thought it would be uh, it'd be pretty good of us if we could generate some money for the EFF. We know there's a lot of uh, civil liberties battles to be fought in the near future, and uh, we may as well get in the game there a little bit. So um, because we are not totally a charity, there's costs involved with uh, running a dunk tank. Um, the dunk tank, if you want to know, costs us about $2,100 to rent. Yeah. And there's also additional insurance riders that we had to pay for, which is maybe another 150 bucks or so, and the $55 loss or damage waiver. But um, I figured that was a lot of money to take out of the finding, so we uh, donated $1,000 of DEFCON money to help support it. So we stuck $1,000, uh, took $1,000 away from the costs, and what we have here is a check that I would like to present to the EFF, Wendy Seltzer, uh, who is here. And first, I'd like her to say a little bit about what the EFF is up to, and then I'm going to present the check and tell you how many dollars it really is. So with that said, let's give Wendy a round of applause. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you from the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Uh, it's $3,027. And... <laughs> At least I got the check. <laughs> I think that's an extra dunk that's happening out there. If anyone wants to collect a little extra money, um, he's in the water. <laughs> well, I've got the check here, and I want to thank you extraordinarily much for. All of, everything that all of you here at the conference have done for us at EFF, people stopping by our booth, people stopping by the dunk tank, especially those people who went into the tank to keep our rights dry, uh, those people who went and got themselves soaked in ice water to keep us from feeling the chilling effects on our online rights, um, really makes a huge difference, and that's what keeps us going, and donations like this make a big splash for EFF. Thank you. Hey, I'd just like to say thanks to Grifter, because Grifter pissed me off a couple of years ago, and several garbage cans of ice at 100 bucks, and I thought Grifter was going to have hypothermia. So Grifter ended up staying in the dunk tank for an hour and a half, and made a lot of money for the EFF, mostly out of my wallet. Oh yeah, I probably don't want to touch that, huh? <laughs> so um, I think it was a big smashing success and we're going to do the dunk tank again next year. And what we need is big celebrities and just people you hate and Peter Shipley and people to, uh, you know, get into the dunk tank there for us. So, And I will say there was a lot of people standing around not fucking poning up cash, right? Next year, they call the Scots tight. Fucking hell. Yeah, I spent a lot of freaking money on this dunk tank this year. So next year, you're all poning up. <laughs> yeah, electrocute the tangent. <laughs> Ooh. Um, it's kind of tingly. 
Um, okay, so for our final contest, we have uh, the Ghetto Hackers, uh, as you know, for the last, uh, this is the third year, have been running our Cap to the Flag contest, and they've been running what they call Kroop Foo all around the country, and they've uh, really been evolving it, and it's really turned into something, uh, something quite cool. Um, they seem to be focusing a lot of energy on how to visualize a little bit of the contest so the rest of us can stop by and see how the teams are doing. Uh, the earlier contests kind of had the problem of nobody knew what was really happening. And this is a way to uh, let people see kind of or feel like they're participating and cheer on their favorite team. So, what? Oh, my God, we forgot Cannonball Run. Oh, yeah, the people who truly are the criminals. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> We'll have to have Tommy Pickles jump up here in a minute then and talk about Cannonball Run while they're setting up. But what Caesar and his crew are going to do here is they've captured enough data that they can represent how the contest went hour for hour for the, first, for the 36 hours. And you'll be able to see a quick time slice of who did what to whom um, and how. So uh, that'll be coming up in... I probably uh, moss dosed it, yeah. Yeah, now for anyone that doesn't understand the term moss dos, this is Jeff Moss. And Jeff Moss wins the prize for dosing his own services the most ever. So if you go to goons.org slash moss dos, you'll see a list of all the incidents where he took out his own servers just being overly paranoid. I'm gonna, and just to give you a quick example, this is what started the Mazda syndrome. I bought a ruggedized laptop, like an AMREL industrial indestructible, drop it 35 times on each access from three feet all day long, no problem. And uh, it's indestructible, because I'm coming to a show, I need my crap to work. You know, it's no second best. If you wait uh, three days to get your laptop fixed, it has to work. So I pony up big bucks, I get this thing. I'm printing the posters for DEF CON about three years ago. I've got my whole screen up and I'm printing. So I take the laptop like any prudent person would do and put it underneath the table. It's printing, I don't want to disturb it. Then I walk over to the three foot plotter to change paper. It uses a large metal spike in the middle of the paper spool, right? And these paper spools that you see all of our posters on is photo paper, it's like, I don't know, five bucks a foot or something. So we've got like $350 of paper on this roll. And I take off the one roll, I lay the spike down on the table, and I turn around to get the next roll of paper ready. The spindle rolls off the table, I look to the left, it rolls off the table, and lands on a chair with arms. And I'm like, no big deal, it's gonna land on the ground. And then it starts rocking. And I get this look like, hmm, and it angles up and it spears down directly into the screen of my laptop. <laughs> The, the ruggedized laptop with the only thing that's not covered under warranty being the screen. <laughs> so I resized the whole print project into the left corner about this big now <laughs> and kept printing. So ever since then, yeah, I'm the Moss Doss. So, I'm over to Caesar. No, no, uh, oh, oh uh, Tommy Pickles. Is Tommy Pickles there? Tommy. Tommy. Who also raised a buttload of cash for the EFF. Yeah, I was one of the first people in the dunk tank, and the first one is the coldest, I'll tell you. Um, it started at, like, sorry about this. Yeah, it started about noon, and yeah, I do have a bladder infection. Um, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Okay, uh, how many people know what the DEF CON Cannibal Run is? Raise your hands. Okay, how many thought about doing it? Okay, prove it next year. Uh, race from Redondo Beach to Las Vegas, 288 miles, and we don't really encourage speeding, uh, but we can say some of it is done. Um, the problem this year, which made it really exciting, was when we started the race, the news media showed up. And I thought, oh, it's my buddy Pat with Tech TV. This is going to be a nice, sweet, you know, piece that I could show my mom. Unfortunately, they had a printed copy of the website. And they said, it says you can use police scanners, radar detectors, police lights. And they had a problem with this. So the news media actually attacked us for about an hour. And that footage will be up on the website. <laughs> um, 
This was funny because the guy wouldn't tell us our name or the, the name of the station. Just so you guys know, the acid tag was on the battery of the camera and it said KTLA 5. <laughs> so we asked him when it would be on, probably next week. So uh, if you want to email the guy, I'm sure it's like ken.davis at ktla5.com or something. <laughs> so uh, then the cops showed up <laughs> and shook hands with the media. And the media guy said, this is why I called you. And the cop told us the original Cannibal Run used to run out of Redondo Beach. And basically, he told us about the ambulance that entered in it and stuff like that, which was good. Then he turned to us and said, I have real crime to fight. And he took off. <laughs> the fun part about this now was when the cop was going to leave, the cop stopped right in front of us and said, I'm team number seven, see you there. And he, <laughs> so basically this year we had five teams. Um, more were signed up on the website, but then again, I saw a raise of hands and you guys didn't show up either. Um, five teams raced. Uh, one of the guys uh, has been here three years and I'd like to bring him up on stage. Uh, his name is Evil Matt, and he uh, actually won the race for the second time out of the three years. And he actually is from local Las Vegas here, which is a pretty good deal to drive out from Las Vegas all the way out to Redondo Beach just to beat us. Um, <laughs> he also did start last, so if he beat anyone here, he basically won. Um, the other uh, point that I want to make is one of the guys from Chicago came out and uh, he didn't make it here. So if you happen to see a milk carton with his picture on it, with a picture of a vehicle, um, that's probably that guy. And we'd like to give him just thanks for not showing up because that's just the funniest thing when we're waiting in a bar with a time clock. <laughs> Uh, Matt's, quick, Matt's time to beat everyone was 3 hours and 58 minutes, which is pretty impressive during the daytime, riding down to 15. Um, I came in second. Oh, Matt's team is Team Sodomy, if you guys don't remember it from last year. Uh, my team, Team Overslept, since I haven't been on time to a cannonball run and I'm the promoter, uh, came in second place. Team Bizarro came in third place. Team Evil Mofo came in fourth place, and then Chicago 2600 didn't show up, uh, at least in Vegas. They were at the start line. Uh, average speed, I would say, was about 120 is what we were doing on the 15. Uh, we would go higher, I guess, but my O2 sensor went out when we were climbing up a hill, so it sputtered a lot, so I had to drop it down to 90. Um, <laughs> I'll have Matt come up and tell you anything about his experience, but Matt's the winner here, so let's bring him up on stage. And uh, we got a little car trophy here that we're going to give to Matt and his long, you know, and the DEF CON badge as well. So, yeah. thank you. Thanks. Hi. Okay, uh, my name is Matt, and uh, I guess this is my third year running. And it's really awesome. It's really worth it. If any of you guys are thinking about doing it, come out and do it. Um, I don't know, Tommy's 120, I mean, I guess we just got really lucky because I only did 85, so uh, <laughs> I don't know what they were doing with the rest of their time. They must have parked outside and just not came in. But, uh, you know, everybody says they've done it in two hours, I've done it in three hours, everybody says it, but uh, nobody wants to come do it and put their money where their mouth is. So if you think you really can do it in three hours and you could punch the two clocks, we'll come out and do it. It's a lot of fun. Um, nobody's gotten a ticket yet as far as I know. There hasn't been any accidents. We do it really safe. Um, it's a bunch of great <laughs> stick to 65 the whole way, designated speed limit. Um, it's you know a really bu great bunch of guys doing it. We got Tommy running it is awesome. Uh, we have LFA, he's a lot of fun. We have uh, Jimmy and Aaron, just a bunch of just great guys out there every year. You know all five cars of us out there year after year. But it's worth it. Come on down and uh, you know beat us next time. All right, put your money where your mouth is and come get some. That's it. Thank you.
Okay, that brings us to the granddaddy competition. It involves generally the most people at DEF CON. It has uh, the longest tradition, and that is our Capture the Flag root foo put on by the Ghetto Hackers in 206. Representing them is Caesar, who will now take the microphone and uh, close it down. So let's give uh, those guys a warm round of applause. Thanks. Thank you much. Um, a couple of things. First, the contest has been going forever and ever. Uh, Capture the Flag contest. It's taken different forms over the years as people have tried to solve the problem of how do you actually measure in a couple of days how cool a hundred different hackers are and which group is cooler than the others. What's the relative value of rooting an Irex box versus a Solaris box and so forth. And that's just fucked everyone off for a lot of years. Uh, we screwed it up pretty good a couple of the last couple of years, but it's been a better contest. And this year, I think we finally really found a good way to, to run it. Um, the root foo name uh, that a lot of people have heard is just our idea of what the skill is inside of someone that knows what it means to get root, what it means to keep root, and what it means to stop other people from taking it from you. Uh, in that vein, I would like to get MD5 to come up here for just a second and talk to you about um, a whole bunch of people, I guess, on the East Coast were talking about that people on the West Coast aren't cool. And then people on the West Coast were talking about people on the East Coast are stuck up assholes. And then people on the West Coast were, or East Coast were saying that people on the West Coast are a bunch of fucking lamers. And so we decided that we were going to, um, in the spirit of Tommy Pickles, put your money where your mouth is, uh, have a little bit bigger contest with a lot more open invite, uh, longer term thing. And so MD5, why don't you give a little shout out about that? Okay, so earlier this uh, month we went to Hope Five and uh, we got some. Uh, we promoted this contest called Mega Root Foo. It's one notch up from what you see here. Uh, the Ghetto Hackers put on. It's online. You don't need to be in person. You can establish teams locally, or you can just be, you know, working at uh, your day job, participating in this game. The deal is, if uh, it's a you know attack and defense scenario, same format as what we have here, um, and uh, it, it's it's out set out to. Uh, determine what, who's who and who's not. And uh, quoting Emmanuel Goldstein when asked, who's going to win? He's like, Psh, of course, the East Coast. So I asked you to uh, pick up these flyers on the back. It's a uh, sign-up URL. You go out there, create your team, join a team. And uh, the contest flies February 05. And um, that's about it. If you've got any questions, find me after the uh, presentation here, and I'll answer them. Thanks. Okay, so a real fast uh, catch up on how scoring has worked this year. Um, in the past, it's been dropping uh, text files on the root partition or in some supposedly protected part. You know, C colon is a real protected part of Windows, so busting Windows boxes was always a little bit easier than busting Unix in the old days. Um, but in the real world, busting Windows is actually kind of a fucking whore if you're out there because, well, it doesn't really have a good shell and lots of reasons up until EI and some other guys did some, you know, Barnaby did his really nice shell code. Um, so. What we did this year was to say that protecting information, private data, uh, emails, and so forth like that is the goal of the game. So keep yours and try to get into the secret information on the other people's systems. The idea being that you have to keep being able to get it. They can try to secure it. And once they do secure the service, you can no longer get the secret information from their machine. You should have to keep proving that you can root them over and over again. So in that end, our, our router in the center connected the eight teams together and issued to them tokens, big long numbers that were signed by our key, so we knew real tokens from fake ones. And uh, came back to get the tokens some minutes later. And if you could break in before we came back to get the token and proved us that you'd seen the number, proved our router with a little uploader, then uh, you get one offensive point. If the token never got stolen by anybody during the period, then that team gets a defensive point. And for every packet or some combination of packets, we issued a penalty point. So in the final scoring, 80% of the score was from offense, 15% from defense, and 5% from penalties. That's considerably he more heavily weighted toward offense this year uh, because a lot of people bitched that they're supposed to be a hacking contest and not a sysadmin contest, and so we listened. Um, it turns out that the penalties and defense didn't mean shit because the teams that did well on offense did well on defense, and the penalties were about even. So rather than waste all your time looking at boring numbers that are all tied and even, we're just going to look at the attacking, the offensive numbers uh, for various services and teams and a little bit of breakdown of how the team works. And you'll understand real well when you see the last couple of graphics why the team that won won. So um, by service, what you're seeing now up on the screen, what you've been looking at, the top, the purple bars, this is by hour, left to right, over the 36 hours or 34 hours or so of the contest. 
Speaking of which, that's 100 hackers, 30 hours straight, no sleep, caffeine, alcohol, smokes, the whole thing. Y'all are some fucking impressive bastards. Nice job, everybody. So round of applause just to the hackers for staying up that long. <laughs> So one of the things that we did, what, uh, an important note is that the, all the scoring is exactly fair and even amongst the teams. So the expectation is, is if there's something easy to do, then everybody's going to do it. And if it's hard to do, then only a few people will do it. And so it's the difference between teams that really matters, not so much, you know, 100 million points doesn't mean shit if every little space invader is worth a million points each, right? So it's, it's the important thing is the differences between scores. So as you see from left to right here, Lambda Moo, we made a little moo, and inside the moo, in different places, we'd drop a token thing, and the name of the token was the name of the, was the actual scoring point. So you had to run around through infinite mazes of forests that say you're in a dark forest. There are exits north, northwest, and south. And you go north, and you go south, and you don't end up in the same place. Somewhere on the ground, there's a token. You can grab it and get scored for it. Pain in the ass. Best thing to do is to write a bot. As you can see, from left to right, all the way through the contest, there's this light yellow. I don't know if the colors are registering very well. Uh, it's sort of the middle bar, be, uh, beige color. Lambda Moo got scored on pretty much the whole contest by a whole lot of people. Open Wiki. Uh, all you had to do to root the Wiki service was type token into the search field. Very easy. And as you can see with the open wiki, it's the light blue bars. That was done quite a bit. All you had to do to secure the service was to edit the source code and take the word token out of every search, which didn't happen. <laughs> Not so much with the goodness. Um, gallery service is very, these uh, little uh, periwinkle, I guess you'd call the color of things at the bottom of a couple of things. Not many people own the gallery service. It was just a little too secure, I guess, for their mad skizzles. Uh, the PHP nuke. Uh, PHP Nuke, everybody knows how to hack this, right? Everybody knows how to bust PHP Nuke, and a lot of people did. And there's a couple of interesting places when we get to how the teams actually scored themselves, where you can see that PHP Nuke made the difference in a couple of cases and really showed one team's skills. Um, and the last thing was GHI Gate, and that was a little service that we wrote, uh, just a little gateway service. Um, and that one got hacked more toward the end once people had gotten their security and their services figured out, and it really took time to analyze the code that they were running. Um, so let's switch over. This is the number of attacks per team across the, across the contest. So the first thing you're going to notice is two teams really dominated the fuck out of this contest. Uh, team Yellow, that's uh, Enemy Combatants, and Team Red, that's School of Root. Clearly, clearly the top-notch caliber uh, teams in this one. Although I have to point out, in the beginning of the contest, especially the first uh, 12 hours or so, Emunix, the green team, showed a really strong showing. And uh, I'd like to make a little note about these guys. They've shown strongly in the last three years. Um, they're coming here to show off how fucking badass Emunix Linux is. And while that's a cool thing, we can either make a contest for product people or for people people. And the other seven teams wanted it the other way. So our contest really isn't geared toward what they're trying to do. So it's a little unfair to see that they're at the bottom of the thing because they've had a consistently good offense, consistently good defense, especially once their product comes up. So a little honorable mention to Emunix for their strong showing yet again. So on the note of Immunix, uh, let's look at what the attacks looked like. So this is Immunix owning over the course of the contest. And you can see that they really nailed the open wiki points in the first day. Then they had something like, I guess they might have gone to sleep from 4 to 8 a.m. or something. <laughs> maybe they fell down with the keyboards, or maybe the, the guys who knew exactly how to ex do this one ran off. But uh, there's about six hours there, so I'm figuring it looks like somebody took a nap. Um, now, the important thing to see, though, is of all the things that they stole, they had to keep those tokens on their machine until we were going to come collect them later. And so here's the difference between what they owned and what they kept long enough. So Ambienix Linux is apparently not a good security product for securing your Windows 2000 server and Windows XP products. <laughs> By the way, this is the first year that Windows has been the target operating system. Uh, the Ghetto Hackers bought licenses for the teams just to make sure everybody was totally fucking shocked because nobody thought A, that we had any money, or B, that we'd ever give it away. 
um, or C, that we'd take the time to make a Windows hacking contest. Uh, in the real world, a lot of machines are Windows, and we want to at least give one year's notice to those guys. And we don't promise, but we suggest that we probably won't do that again next year. Uh, red team owns. So here's what the school of root owned. Um, it's cool to see that they had a lot of more distribution. They owned a bunch of PHP Nuke in the uh, in the midnight time frame. They went over to OpenWiki toward the end of the contest. But they actually scored something against every service, and they scored something against, I believe, every team. Um, so School of Root, you guys did a really nice job with that. Congratulations. Now, here's the interesting thing is comparing what they stole to how many they kept. Check this out. They kept almost everything they stole. So, nice job, guys. That's fucking impressive. Now, here's a team with a little bit more impressive offense numbers. Check this shit out. These guys really did a nice job. I think what happened, and they told me that this is what happened, they developed a lot of tools and automated rooting all the other teams so that they could get on to building the next exploit while the other teams figured out how to defend this one. These guys did a great job just conquering the shit out of people. Unfortunately, I guess they spent their time writing those tools because if you look at what happened after they stole them all, not so much. They lost a lot of their offensive points for having them re-stolen by the red team. Uh, in fact, I believe the, the strategy was let yellow root everyone else and we'll root yellow. And I think that's actually how this contest went. So let's look at, look at uh, who owned So this is who attacked yellow and when. Uh, yellow did not lose any points. They did not get anything taken away from them in terms of actual offense after 2 p.m. yesterday. So eight hours of solid defense at the end of the contest. That really demonstrates the kind of change in priorities over the hours after you get going, get your develop, development in order. They got their defense working really well. Um, let's see who owned the red team. Yeah, not so much. Nobody really got in past them. I believe they found a cheap trick that when the scoreboard came talking to them, the TTL was one shorter than when another team came talking to them. You guys didn't do it? Yeah, okay. Yeah, you damn, damn right you did. <laughs> There's no way you defended Windows this well. <laughs> you cheated the network. So for that, that's a really cool. Nice job. Um, in total, let's see the, the breakdown of the points. Oh, I wanted to give a, a special mention to Team Iron Grep. Um, they didn't show up in here because they didn't score any points at all. Um, here's the bicolor analysis then of all the offensive points. and. Because of the graphs you saw of how many points that red team kept and how few they got attacked, the fact that they only won by about 3% difference in their offensive score over the yellow team is a tiny amount of difference. The yellow team really deserves a lot of credit for how much they asked they really kicked, but just not quite enough. 97% is a good solid second place, but School of Root, why don't you guys come up here and collect all your prizes. Fantastic fucking job. Give these guys a round of applause. They work really fucking hard. This is a pretty fat wad of uh, black badges. These guys don't have to pay for this contest ever or come here ever again. We've also got... And also, these are uh, the, 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 with the token dropping service and the deposit and withdrawal methods we did, we figured these guys would uh, appreciate some ties to go with their banking attire when they go back to work. So they've got little yellow ninja ties to go with all the other swag that DEF CON is providing. And uh, to that end... And of course, to that end, the uh, Uber Elite black leather jacket from DEF CON and uh, then a bunch of other swag. We'll take care of that behind for here because these guys don't want to stand here for another hour while we handle these guys all their swag. Anyway, uh, Jeff, for you. Thank you all very much and uh, we'll be changing the format of the contest to fit what the con needs and what people want, but thanks a lot for helping us out.
Uh, okay. Uh, something I, I wasn't really clear on, and I wanted to make sure it got reflected right, was uh, Jeff was just letting me know that when we get the big, big dogs from the East versus West contest, we're going to have a couple of contests here next year, and one of them is going to be the big final showdown, blood sport in the pit, first blood. Well, where are you, where are you from? And uh, School of Root, where are you from? Uh, it turns out that uh, apparently the East Coast didn't make such a strong showing in the uh, DEF CON Capture the Flag contest hosted by the Ghetto Hackers in 2004. Uh, I mean, it's not that they can't, you know, it's that they're too cool, or, or, or it's too far away, or uh, they were... <laughs> well, or maybe they just don't know we exist, you know, we, we might be the little kids. So, anyway, School of Root, congratulations guys, nice fucking job. Okay, there's one last contest that also got forgotten, that, uh, or one last award. If you noticed on your show CD-ROM, there was a, uh, a movie or a video contest for uh, sort of DEF CON shorts. And uh, we were going to play them on the TV and we were going to screen them, but we kind of lost track of the organizers. We never really heard from them. But the winners are here. So what I want to do is have uh, Dead Addict come up on stage, talk a little bit about the contest, introduce the winners. And so when you watch the video, and you see the Uber Elite Poser Hacker, actually, uh, that's on the, on the CD-ROM. That, uh, that was the winning entry. So let me hand it off to uh, DA. I have a couple announcements and questions for you guys, such as, uh, do you like currently the technical content of the speeches? Can you tell they're any different than last year? Do you think they were better? Raise your hand than last year. Think they're about the same as last year? Raise your hand. Think they all sucked? Raise your hand. Okay, so there's only uh, we showed an improvement in, in technical content. We're going to keep trying to do that, um, make them better and better. And we also wanted to know: Did you like the format? Like going. So we'll be back again. And uh, with that, I want to hand it off to Zach here, who's going to make a couple of announcements. And, uh, and then we're going to uh, Yeah, yeah. And then we're going to have uh, the winners of the movie contest. And then we've got actually some more stuff to give away to you, the attendees. So uh, don't touch that dial. How many people showed up? Um, that's always really difficult to determine, because we have a lot of press, speakers, helpers, freebies, people that sneak in, people that get double badges. Um, but we're guessing this year, we're over 4,000 something attendees, and we're guessing total head count to be almost 5,000, which is one of the second largest shows we've ever done. So. <laughs> the last time we had this many people was right at the height of the dot-com bubble, uh, right before it burst, when it was really crazy. So I think that things are picking up again, because people are starting to show up here and at other cons. So hopefully uh, the economy is recovering for us. That's cool. So. Hopefully I'll be seeing you guys again next year. Here. Hey. Uh, the reason he's, he's here 
is because I'm not a particularly fantastic public speaker, so excuse me. Uh, the goons here love fucking DEF CON, and the reason DEF CON is a success year after year is not just you, but it's the people that are behind the scenes that put the show on. So, as far as goons go, let's get you up on stage, guys. Okay, so there's the mock team that make sure you have a network and put together DEF CON TV, dispatch, security, speaker control, which makes sure they're sober, <laughs> contests, the quartermaster, vendor, ghetto hackers for their CTF and root food, dump tank this year, they raised a shitload of money, latest link, Wim and G. Mark Harvey, which are around somewhere for 10 years of Hacker Jeopardy. Sound of Knowledge, that are uh, recording everything and uh, providing the feeds for DEF CON TV. Jinx, Uncle Ira from Miko, Borderman and all the other vendors that uh, ensure you've got shiny, shiny toys to buy. <laughs> I'd also like to thank you guys for your dedication, the parties, the booze, the tech and your enthusiasm, which is the reason we come again year after year. And also the AP staff, uh, Diana Takai and all the rest of the staff, Gary, Don, Sally, Michelle, Kenny, your bartenders for DEF CON. And just remember, these are the guys, they stay sober so you don't have to. The goons of DEF CON. So, uh, Speaking of staying sober, I've arranged a little present for all the staff uh, in the knock after where we've got several hundred beers waiting for them. Yeah. 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 So, oh. yeah. Okay, so I want to hand it quickly. I want to hand it off to Dead Attic to uh, get rid of the last uh, prizes, give uh, credit where credit's due to the winners of the uh, contest. And with that, we're just going to kind of close it down, hang out by the pool, and see you guys for the rest of the day. So, let's see, Dead Addict. Take it away. Oh, wait. Uh, just before DA speaks, I'd like to thank my own personal sponsors, Dejaram and uh, Bombay Sapphire. Okay. Okay. okay, no problem. So, this year a couple of friends uh, of mine had this great idea, and um, it, it kind of centered around the idea that people were having children, and we wanted uh, good, useful hacker propaganda to bring those children up on. Some good educational films, little flash cartoons, just just to, to teach the kids the right way. So we, we, we uh, formulated a, a contest, a film contest, and it really, uh, it was their idea, and they did most of the work, and uh, there was some last minute foobar that presented the, prevented the film formats to be transferred to the proper format to get on TV. So I, I, I apologize for not having this on TV, but there was some funny, funny stuff and so there were some good films. There was only a month um, that people could enter, so the contest was put together at the last second, but despite this, we had, uh, I believe, seven entries uh, step up to the plate and there was a lot of work put into them. And uh, our winners here will talk about how their, uh, their experience uh, went because uh, the, the film they submitted, Poser, which, how many here uh, saw the film Poser? Raise your hands, please. Just curious. Okay. Um, that was just funny. That was, that was, that was amusing. Um, and it, it, it takes a lot of uh, balls in my mind for the person who played the Poser to uh, uh, portray himself as such and then be on, uh, be on video and walk around and people, hey, are you the poser? That takes balls. Um, so, next year we'll announce it earlier and hopefully we'll um, spark the imagination of a lot of people that want to exercise their creati creativity in a visual medium, or better yet, uh, hackers that can hoodwink their, uh, their video friends into doing all sorts of work and just making sure your hacker theme is in there. Um, so without uh, further ado, I'd like to announce our winners, um, The Saint and Nightmare Baby. Can you uh, please come up on the stage? And uh, thank you. Are, are you a poser, Saint? Yeah. 
Okay. We, we, uh, let me talk a little bit about uh, one of the things uh, they're going to get, and we'll get some other stuff for them later, but uh, there were 144 of these uh, DEF CON Zippos made. We weren't sure this year if anyone would really be down, interested in Zippos, and know how many to make. And it turned out that the goons, uh, you know, they got first stab at them uh, for helping out. Most of them went to the, the goons, so there weren't any left to sell to anyone, I don't think. So um, they get uh, a DEF CON Zippo, and it's, we, we looked at uh, fake Zippos made in China, and uh, it was handed off to me for beta testing because I, I, I'm a tester and I'm a smoker, so that works out well. And uh, the Chinese version, worthless, bad lighter. Zippo, made in America, good lighter, very good lighter, Zippo. And if you can uh, say a couple words about uh, the pain and sweat and agony uh, of uh, being a poser at DEF CON. Oh, making your films, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, just say that this is my first year at DEF CON, and uh, me and my friends, we found out about the film contest about a week and a half before DEF CON, uh, before the deadline. So uh, the first thing we tried to make, try to scramble together, we're making an action film about these hackers in the future getting chased by mercenaries and getting killed. And we had all these fight scenes and car chases, but because the deadline was so soon, we uh, only got about half of it done. So we decided to make Poser because uh, we decided we should enter something. And um, basically, it was my entire junior high experience. So um, <laughs> I, thought I, I thought I was good authority on it. So. It was uh, a lot of fun, and uh, my girlfriend and her friend Sam, the two beautiful ladies in white at the ball, they um, they tried not to laugh. So I want to thank them. I want to thank my friends uh, Raleigh Cosgrove and just. And Dark Tangent because he's the one who told me about all this. So uh, thanks a lot. I really enjoyed it. So uh, Dark Tangent uh, was in the dunk tank for a while. Um, apparently everyone loves Dark Tangent a lot because he was dunked a lot. And uh, as he was shivering and uh, getting hypothermia, he's like, it's all for a good cause. I, I was in dunk, tape at, dunk tank at one moment uh, for a half hour. And after my first half a dozen or so dunks, I'm like, you know, how important are electronic civil liberties, really? <laughs> But uh, apparently Jeff uh, didn't get dunked enough, so uh, there's a second dunking of uh, his, his uh, closing ceremonies, which uh, I think is very thoughtful. A any opinions on the info channel? Here. All right, grab it. Hey, I just wanted, I just wanted to quickly ask, uh, rather than taking shouts from the crowd, if any of you guys have suggestions, uh, I wrote that the info channel that was up, sorry it wasn't up today, had a little problem with the, the, the month change, but if you guys have any, any ideas, yeah. <laughs> I wrote it in about, uh, in about, you know, four hours of caffeine induced, you know, at four in the morning, yeah. Not, not a lot of time for QA and testing as much as I wanted to put together a full quality assurance plan and the company with a TPS report. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, but if you guys have any suggestions, just drop me an email, um, josh at nicepeople.org, and um, just uh, if you guys have